Hey guys, Chris here. Today I have a story from one of our viewers who at a very young age, he was 12 years old, he was solo fishing up in a remote area in Oregon. And there he had an encounter with something that was following him while he got lost. That's next. Okay, you guys, I am in the Sierra Nevada, and this is one of my favorite places, is this long, narrow, grassy valley with mountains all around, and this beautiful stream that I'm sitting right in the middle of. I'm on a little island right here. <laughs> it's pretty cool. And there's fish in here. Not very big, some brook trout, but there's probably some right behind here wanting to get on the show. <laughs> it's nice beer. Trucky Blonde, that is a Tahoe, what's it called, Tahoe style blonde ale. And that says it's light, crisp, refreshing blonde ale designed to quench your thirst in the warm summer days. Today is a warm summer day. So that is how you take care of that. That sideways there. Oh yeah, look at that, wow, it's really light yellow. And tasty. Little sudsy. I'm a <laughs> yeah, I like that. Trekkie Blonde. So tonight's story comes to us from one of our viewers. His name is Todd. He grew up in LA. Early 70s. He was about eight years old. And his mom had a really good friend, her name was Joanne, and she needed to move to Oregon to be near her family, near her mom. And so that summer, Todd, his mom, and his sister went up to see Joanne in Oregon. She had purchased a ranch farm outside of Grants Pass and had this beautiful property. They were really excited to go up there hang out for about a week or so, almost two weeks, and just enjoy some time off and just be in some new country. And right about this time, Todd was only eight years old, but he was starting to get into fishing. And he asked Joanne, is there any good fishing up there? And she said, absolutely. There's good opportunities for fishing right here on the property. And we got some creeks as well. So bring your gear. So he brought his fishing gear so that night before he went out, he was really excited. He could hardly sleep. He got all his gear ready, got up early that next morning, went out to this pond that was on Joanne's property. And right away he was disappointed. It was a pretty small pond and it was very swampy. And it didn't look like there was any fish in it. He tried some fishing, didn't catch anything, tried some worms, night crawlers, bugs. Even put on a tadpole, didn't catch anything. Came back and said, is there anywhere else to fish? I've tried this place and there was nothing there. She said, well, you could go down to the creek, down the road, and there's a bridge there. And he told his mom, and his mom said, nope, you're too young to go fishing by a stream by yourself. And so, came back to Joanne she said there's a neighbor that's got a pond in their property it's much nicer than mine so he went over there one to two acre pond and he right away he caught a bunch of panfish sunfish bluegills had a really good time he said he caught almost a hundred bluegills and he released most of them kept three or four put them in an outside bathtub to keep them alive as pets and then he thought hey I could put these in Joanne's pond and see if we could start a new population there. His mom still wouldn't let him fish down by the creek and that, that summer they went back, came back a couple years later, he's 10 years old now. Mom still said, I don't want you fishing down by that creek, you can fish the pond. He was starting to get bored with that, he really wanted to go down to this creek. He had to wait 
again, his mom was very overprotective. Makes sense, these creeks can go really fast. Your kid falls in and they can just pull you right under. A little pond is a lot safer. Came back for another two week vacation. This was something they did like every couple of years, 1977. Todd finally got a chance to fish on the creek by himself. Heads down the gravel road, half mile or so from the farm ranch, gets to the bridge, starts fishing from the bridge, doesn't catch anything, fishes for about an hour. And he decides to get off the bridge and follow the stream into the forest, going upstream. He's 12 years old, all by himself, got some fishing experience, so he kind of knows what he's doing. He finds this nice sized pool, throws his line in, I don't know what he's fishing with, maybe night crawlers or something, hooks a trout right away. First trout, not very big, he was really excited, released it, goes to another pool. This time he catches a 12 incher. Really nice, he's excited about that. And he gets this idea, maybe I could continue going upstream and have a nice collection of fish, if I'm lucky, and bring home some fish for everyone back at the farm ranch. His mom, Joanne, and his sister. He thought that would be really cool. So he just starts fishing, catching a couple small ones, not having as much luck. He's working his way pretty deep into the forest. He gets to a point and he realizes it's getting late. And he told his mom that he'd have to be back that he'd be back by five o'clock. He didn't have a watch, didn't know, really know what time it was. He figured it was maybe four o'clock. He wanted to catch just a couple more, so he pursued on, kept going upstream, didn't catch anything, and he knew he needed to turn around to get out of there and try to get back in time. It was getting late, he knew he needed to turn back. Turns around, he's heading downstream, following the creek, straight back. His goal was to just follow the creek all the way back to the bridge and then take the road back to the ranch. He comes to a point where there's this hill and the creek slowly wrapped around the base of this hill and he thought, you know, maybe I could just cut over this hill and save a little bit of time. So he goes up this slope, gets to the top, drops down. He doesn't see the creek. He's in a gully. He goes up again. There's another hill. This time this is even steeper, gets to the top of that, he does not see the creek. Comes down and now he's in some thick brush. He's on like a game trail, but the game trail kind of fizzles out. And he's in this thick brush and he's feeling a little, little panic, like kind of lost the creek, I'm kind of getting lost here. He wanted to turn back, but he didn't think that he could get back and then still get back to the ranch on time. So he thought, I'll just press on, it's gotta be this way. He's in this thick underbrush, just pressing on. Finally, it kind of thins out and he steps into this forest with this really thick canopy over the top. He's relieved he's out of the, the brush. There's a lot more open in the forest, but now it's really dark. And this panic starts to set in. Remember, he's only 12 years old. He's lost. He's feeling lost. He's just got to find that creek. And now he's in this forest that's getting really dark and the sun is going, starting to go down. Just like here on me, it was bright and all of a sudden it went behind that mountain. And it's just like somebody hits a switch, a dimmer switch, and then it's suddenly pretty dark. And I can see these forest right up here around me. It's very dark inside there. And that's what he was in. He hears over in some brush in this forest, some rustling, some movement, some sound. A little bit of panic sets in. He's not sure what it is. He's from Los Angeles. He's has no idea thinking maybe a deer, maybe a raccoon or something. Didn't, get too afraid of it, turns around and he picks up his pace and continues through this forest. 
heading what he thinks is east because he's moving away from the sun. And this time he hears in the forest, not too far, 40 feet or so, to his right, some movement parallel to him. Like something's walking in pace with him in the forest. And he would stop and then there'd be a slight delay and then it would stop. And he picked up his pace and it kept pace with him easily. And his first thought was, somebody's in here kind of like messing with me. And he said he saw the movie Deliverance. And he was thinking, maybe is this some hillbilly? He's 12 years old, so he's thinking <laughs> hillbilly. But somebody that's in the woods that could be harmful to him. So he's thinking, I got to get out of here. I got to get through this forest. The fear was overtaking him. And he knew he needed to get out of there fast. So he started running almost as fast as he could. He needed to maintain a pace. And he knew that. And whatever this thing was, was keeping perfect pace with him. And he was really freaked out. He said it was a fear that he can't even describe that he was feeling. He's running, he's going through this forest, and it opens up into this field. Goes up kind of a hill, and he gets to the top of this hill, and he stops, and he looks back, because he didn't hear it. Once he hit the field, he didn't hear it anymore, and he looked back to see whatever or whoever was pursuing him. He didn't see anything, he's looking, he's scanning everything, totally out of breath, just trying to catch his breath because he knows he's got to turn around and just keep going and find this creek and get out of there. Before it's dark, the sun is going down just like here. It's getting dark really fast again, <laughs> like I said. And he's scanning the trees and then he focuses on this tree and he sees this shape behind it. It's about 60 feet away, is what he said. And behind this tree, he sees the silhouette, a little bit of sunlight coming and making a silhouette. And it looks like it's hairy because of the outline. There's a hand on either side of this tree and he sees the head looking out like that. That's all he can see. He guessed it was about seven feet tall. Couldn't have been a person at this point. He remembered seeing Leonard Nimoy in search of, in the 70s, you guys remember that show? <laughs> Paranormal, in search of, and there's like a blank, in search of Bigfoot, UFOs, Loch Ness Monster, etc., etc. He remembers seeing that and seeing some footage of the Gimlin Patterson, and he thought, this is a Bigfoot. I'm being pursued by a Bigfoot. It has to be. It was not a bear. It was standing upright. And it's going from side to side, just staring at him. He's totally panicked, he's lost. All he can do now at this point is just to slowly back up and keep his eye on whatever this thing was, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, and just slowly work his way into the forest, the next forest waiting for him. He's totally filled with fear, finally gets into this forest, can't see the Sasquatch anymore, and he turns and he runs as fast as he can. Gets up to another hill, looks, and all he can see is trees in every direction. Just totally lost, and he's got this thing pursuing him. Goes down into the forest, running pretty much as fast as he can, comes to a small clearing and he stops for a minute and he can hear a creek. Heads over to it as quickly as he can. Turns out it was the creek that he came up. Relieved to find the creek, gets to it, turns right, goes downstream, heading for the bridge. It's very thick along the stream. And when he came up, he was in the water, kind of moving up, hitting the pools. And now he's on this following the creek, it's pretty thick brush, but he's 
follows it, meandering through the forest. Finally, up ahead, he can see the bridge. Heads for the bridge, and behind him, he hears, somewhere behind him along the creek, this loud crack snap like a tree was busted. Totally startled him. Gets to the bridge, climbs up through the brush, gets his hands on the gravel, pulls himself up, gets up by the bridge, looks back into the forest. The forest is now really dark in there. You can see the stream meandering into the darkness of the forest. Doesn't see anything, doesn't know where this thing is at, but he knows it's somewhere behind him. Turns, heads down the gravel road, running as fast as he can not knowing if this thing is going to follow him along the side of the road. Jump up onto the road. He had no idea. But he just ran as fast as he could. Finally sees the ranch off to his right. Runs through the yard. Goes up through the front door. Bursts in the front door. And his mom is waiting for him. She is furious. It's after 8 o'clock. And he didn't care. He said he did not care because he was just relieved to be back at the ranch with his mom, Joanne, and his sister. She's really upset. She was really freaked out. He was gone for three hours plus past his time he was supposed to be back. And he told her exactly what happened. She didn't seem to be buying it. Didn't seem to really care. She just knew that he didn't show up. Goes to bed, wakes up the next day. Joanne comes in and talks to him and says, there's been some neighbors around here and they have mentioned that they've heard and even seen on some occasions this Bigfoot, Sasquatch. And she said, I believe that is what you saw, and I believe you. And he was relieved that somebody actually believed him and gave him some confirmation. He was 12 years old. He told me he doesn't fish anymore. From that day forward, he stopped fishing on land, in the forest. (laughs) He occasionally would fish in the ocean in a boat. And he knew that he can't go in the woods anymore by himself because that was just such a frightening experience at such a young age for Todd. And that is my story for tonight. (laughs) That was a pretty good one. Pretty scary too for Todd. I can relate a lot to that story. I like to fish, when I was first trout fishing in the Black Hills of South Dakota, we would have our camp set up and there would be a creek in the behind the tent somewhere, somewhere around the campground. I would literally take my fishing rod and a bag of worms or some corn or something, or little lures, and I would just get on the stream and I would just go up for hours fishing by myself, 10 years, 11 years, 12 years old, exactly the same kind of thing and I would follow these streams just meandering through the forest and I always felt comfortable because I knew I couldn't get lost if I left the stream. Never leave the stream. The stream is your path literally straight back to where you came from and so that's what I would do and I I had good memories. I never experienced anything like Todd experienced so so that is it for tonight but uh, Wow, the sun is dropped really quickly. I might go over to, you see this, this hill behind me right here? In these rocks, uh, up on this hill, that's where I had this experience about two years ago where I was in my tent and late at night I heard something come through the forest from a long ways away and it sounded like a, like a truck coming through the forest or a freight train. People have said that. And it came directly towards my tent. Like from a long ways off though. Really weird. And I, I talked about this. I did a video on this. 
But that's the spot. And then there was like this growl. This to the right, kind of behind my tent. And then off to my left, down in this valley here, I heard this coyote moving and then yipping, howl yipping. And I did not know what in the heck was going on. And that's when I pulled out my hurricane whistle, which I actually have right here. That thing is very loud, man. And I pulled that bugger out, covered my ears, blasted it, and whatever it was, the one thing took off back through the forest as fast as it came, just crashing through the forest and just going like, like a X amount of miles per hour back through the forest. Anyways, I think if we can get across this creek, I may walk up there before we head out of here. So let's go do it. So it turns out there is really no good place to get across this stream. It's just too wide and too fast. And if I was to get over there and not find the exact place I got over, if I did find a spot, I might be trapped over there. So, But this is where the other side of this rock is where my tent was. And that summer, the creek was a lot lower. It was later in the year. I think it was even September or something. But yeah, that's where it was. So, all right, you guys. Thanks for watching. And uh, I am going to head back to the uh, vehicle. It is that way <laughs> towards that pyramid shaped mountain. So, I'm going to head that way. And uh, thanks for watching. If you guys like stories about the strange, unexplained, that things that go bump in the night, like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate that. And as always, keep hiking.